Let's move on now to our fourth main topic today. And our fourth main topic today gets sent in to us from Joshua Bakerman, who writes, Hey, John and crew. It's been about two and a half weeks since the Hobbs and Shaw premiere, but there have been no reviews that have come out. Even the social media reactions have not been posted. This is a little worrisome, as this is Universal's big movie of the summer. What do you guys think about this? Thank you so much, and bring on the filthy. All right, thanks a lot for the question, Joshua. And you ain't wrong. This movie opens on Thursday. Hobbs and Shaw opens on Thursday. It's now Tuesday, and the review embargo is still not lifted. And I can tell you when it does lift. It lifts tomorrow, the day before the movie comes out. Now, look, I, I, let me say this. You guys know I'm super stoked for this movie. Rob, you and I have been talking about this for over a year, this movie. I think this is going to be great. I think the trailers have been bonkers. I love Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I love Jason Statham. I love Idris Elba. I love everything about this thing, and I cannot wait. And I'm going to go watch it tonight. So I'll let you guys know what I think about this movie tomorrow. I'm going to go see it tonight, and I'm excited to see it. But Rob... Listen, I don't care if this is a movie I've been excited for. I have always said, and 99% of the time it turns out to be true, it is a red flag when a studio shows no confidence in their movie and holds off review and social media embargo until the day before the movie comes out. Because if they believed in their movie, again, not every single time, but 99% of the time, if they believed in their film, if they believed people were going to like this, they would lift this re review embargo four or five days before the movie comes out so you can get this big positive wave uh, word of mouth, the reviews coming out, all the stories to segue into people going out to see the movie on Thursday. But what's happening here? Universal is waving this giant flag that says, our movie sucks and we don't believe you're going to like it. That's what they're doing. And whether or not, now look, here, there's also an example like Crawl, which I, you know, I just reviewed last week about the alligators in Florida during the storm, right? They also held the review until like the day before the movie came out. And I ended up loving that movie, but as I'm watching the movie, I'm like, oh yeah, they didn't think audiences were going to like this. I mean, I did like it and a lot of us did like it, but I, as I'm watching the movie, I'm like, I could see why the, the, uh, the studio suits were thinking, Audiences aren't going to actually like this movie, so let's not lift the review embargo. But lucky for them, it turns out that we did. Hopefully, that's the scenario here, Rob, because you know I have been ludicrously excited for this film, but it don't matter if I've been excited or not. This is a bad move by Universal. Show, because I always say this, if you're not going to show confidence in your film, why should I have confidence in your film? And now I'm going into this movie tonight a hell of a lot more skeptical than I would have been going in a few days ago if they had lifted the review embargo and showed any semblance of belief in this movie. Any semblance that they had a core foundational assurance in themselves that audience are going to like our movie. By doing this and lifting the review embargo the day before, they are screaming in our ears, we don't believe in this movie. And that's a bad move. I don't know, Rob. You're, you're seeing this unfold. I know you've been excited for this. Do you think I'm maybe making too much of this? Which, you know, has happened. Am I making too much of this or is this really concerning? Well, now remember when the first trailer came out, I said this movie had no verisimilitude. It had no realism. I was totally, th I thought it was silly and over the top in a cartoon. Perhaps they would like to keep it a secret because Han maybe even comes back at the end of this movie using the super soldier technology that creates Idris Elba. That's why they're keeping it a secret. That's my hope, John. That's my dream. Or this movie is terrible. It's a, it's a, it's a, it besmirches the entire franchise. It, it denigrates Han. It turns Hobbs and Shaw into people they shouldn't be because after all, they're both kind of villains. And now they've been elevated to like these heroes. I think it might just Hobbs be Hobbs is a hero. What are you talking about? He's always he been was, a hero. He was always against... Look, they made him kind of a hero, but he was always against Vin Diesel's character. Because he's a dick. Anyway, <laughs> this might be the karmic justice I've been looking for. We might get hashtag justice for Han in just a different way than I thought. This might this movie might flame out and die at the box office. No, I take no joy in that. I, I, I want it to be good. I don't know. So, Aaron, you see this. Do you think, hey, look, reassure me here, because I'm excited for this movie. Reassure me and let me know everything's going to be okay. Well, you know, when I first saw the question, I thought, oh, my gosh, that's so pessimistic. I'm sure that they're going to, I don't know. I don't know. It does 
remind me of a scenario that I was involved in once. I remember when I was working on a show called Detroit 187 for ABC and we were filming in Detroit and a lot of people lived in the suburbs and you have to take this highway to get into the city. And every day on my way to work, I'd pass the big old Detroit 187 billboard and I was like, yeah, and I saw posters. I was like, yeah, they're promoting the show, they're promoting the show. And then I would call my friends in LA and say, hey, have you seen the billboards? Have you seen the posters? And there was nothing. And I've seen a lot of Hobbs and Shaw like posters and things around Los Angeles. And I remember Michael Imperioli, I believe, was the one who told me because he was on the show. He said there, it's this trick that the studios do is they always put the advertising on the way to work for the actors and the people involved so that they think that it's being promoted, but they don't promote it anywhere else. So I'm actually curious if Hobbs and Shaw posters and billboards and all that kind of stuff are up in other parts of the com- of the country. And it is true that if a studio does not believe in a film, they're not going to spend the money on the P&A. They're not going to spend the money to really promote the film. And reviews are a big part of that. So in, in one sense, I go, well, maybe they're just holding them back because the reviews have not been great on a critical level, but this is not really a critical kind of film. It's a family, it's a, it's a fun Fast and the Furious franchise film, and they're going to let the audience speak for themselves after, say, a press screening like tonight. Um, or maybe it just means that they think that it's total garbage and they just kind of want to shoot it out as soon as possible. Yeah, I, th- I think, if anything, John, it, it's always interested me that this movie, some of it takes place in Samoa where mm. Dwayne yeah. Johnson and his family are from. And yeah. I'm like, I while I appreciate that from a cultural standpoint, I'm like, was that really the smartest choice for a Fast and the Furious movie? A, a franchise that's built basically on the asphalt, the streets of Los Angeles, ultimately, you're going to go to a Pacific island and have your... Well, I mean, they've always... But they've also done the boats world. and, you know... Sure, but it's mostly been, you know, at the end of the day, it's about cars on roads. But, but remember, in one of the trailers, one of the shots in one of the trailers is the interior of Hobbs Garage. Where I they're know. Like, so, I mean, cars mm-hmm. are still clearly a central figure for it's them, true. too. It's true. It'll be interesting so. to see. I mean, I, I, look, I like that idea as a as a setting. I'm just like, they have to bring all the heavy artillery there. You and know? I can see motorcycles on dirt roads. Yeah. Then a helicopter comes down and picks up the motorcycle. I mean, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, I want the movie to work. I, I always want every movie to work, but I want this movie to work. Well, I, uh, I look, I'm going to go see we it tonight. Do, Robert. Hopefully we the next Fast and Furious will be about bird scooters. <laughs> do you want Justice for Han? <laughs> Justice for Han. All right, guys, what do you think about this? Do you think, John, relax, buddy. This movie's going to be every bit as good as you hope it will be. Or are you like me and saying, sorry, Campy, it looks like you're going to be disappointed because, yeah, clearly Universal doesn't believe in this film. What do you think about this? Jump down in the comments section below and let me know your thoughts. All right.